Hello there, and welcome back to Green Valley Zoo, episode 23. And in today's episode, I'm building something a bit different, uh, different for me anyway, uh, and it's chimpanzee enclosure. Um, I wanted to put chimps in because it's, you know, I wanted some something a bit different. Uh, I wanted uh, one of the monkeys, uh, the larger monkeys at least. And I thought chimpanzees were a good choice. I thought I could have a bit of fun making a, a habitat for them. And I wanted to do a dome. And I thought this was a logical animal to do a dome for. Uh, it's something that I've not really done in the game yet. Tried to create a large dome. And uh, I thought, hey, let's give it a go. As you can see on the screen, it um it, it's it can be a complicated process it depends sometimes it seems to work really well and and easily first time and then other times it all seems to go hideously wrong and can be very frustrating um but i think i've just about worked out the the te the technique of um of doing this bit where you you create uh a segment and then you just copy the segment round until you've created the whole dome <laughs> I, th I think that's the logical way of doing it anyway I mean um, it seemed to work for me at least now this project it's I'll be honest this is a project that went disastrously wrong after this point so I managed to create the framework of what I wanted and I thought it was going fine and I had a lot of fun making this edge as you can see but the final product wasn't wasn't what i wanted it, it didn't work so off camera i have completely rebuilt these domes from the framework out so the frame the shape of the domes has stayed but basically this entire side piece has changed and i will explain why as we go along as you can see what i wanted obviously at the bottom here you would want um, glass because realistically if the animals are down on the floor and people are walking right next to it you you don't want people to be able to to put their hands through metal bars uh, for obvious health and safety reasons and so you'd have glass and then the top would be uh, some sort of wire mesh or metal or something and the problem was I, I did this with the glass down the bottom and then once it was all finished and I'd got them in place and and done a bit of work around the outside as well it became pretty obvious that the glass in the game is just no good these these panels of glass that you can see I've used they they're just not see-through enough for glass I mean they they're just too dark too dirty they don't I mean it may be fairly realistic that glass does get dirty but from a game point of view it's quite annoying that there isn't clear glass to use um, as just individual panels I think the um, I think the glass that comes with a frame is better but this uh, the, these glass panels that are just on their own they're just no good at all because you can't see through them so those had to go and then you can see I, I, want, I was doing something at the top here and I, 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 th I thought it made sense for it to be metal. Now it turns out again I was completely wrong and I end up using rope for the top. And let me tell you that was time consuming because I'd done, I'd done this as you can see, um, you know, lining up all of these things and getting the angles right and, and getting them all the, you know, all filled in all the way up to the top. But then because of the way I'd done it, I, if I wanted to replace them, all these metal pieces, these metal fence pieces with rope, I had to go around and individually select and delete them all and then replace them with a rope pattern which I built. Now I was sensible when I redid it with rope and I created the rope piece. Uh, the segment of rope as a separate building which meant I could copy and paste it and if I ever need to go in and uh, and change it 
it's much easier to select the whole thing without selecting all the framework at the same time. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Um, because obviously this, these metal pieces are part of the building with the framework and so you can't select one without selecting the other basically and so when I wanted to go back in and, and make changes it, I, I had to go around and delete all of these metal pieces on their own which was very boring uh, especially when you consider at the end of this I not only do I create this whole dome with the this side that I'm building I then copy the dome twice as well uh, that was always my plan. I wanted not just one dome, I wanted it to be three connected domes. So what I do, I make this one and then I copy and paste it twice and put them next to each other. Because threes generally work better than individual uh, pieces, whether that's a, a dome or, you know, I mean, that's coming from my gardening background. You, ne you never really plant plants individually. You generally plant plants in lots of threes um, because that's it, it's just more aesthetically pleasing so from a from a plant point of view you you plant in triangles because nature doesn't do straight lines and if, if you have if you have two of something you're automatically creating a line if you have four of something generally you, you're going to end up creating a square so generally you work in odd numbers when it comes to plants you know, threes or fives or sevens, something like that. Uh, and the principle that I took from that, I applied to this. I thought if I had one dome, it, it wasn't big enough for a start. I thought if I had two next to each other, it could look okay. But it, it just isn't as aesthetically pleasing as three. In a, not a triangle as such, but well, you'll, you'll, you'll see yeah, in a minute what they end up looking like um, and I'm really happy with the with the shape I just wasn't happy with this the, the side panels and uh, in fact the only bit I was happy with was this top piece here this, uh, this these wooden pieces at the top those are the only bits that stay but you can see the the basic principle of what I'm trying to achieve and it uh, it works really well so you can see so you you, you, know, you, you get your one side and then you copy it round you have to line it up so it takes a bit of time getting it um, getting it all lined up properly uh, and I, I wasn't too sure because sometimes you you line it up exactly symmetrically and sometimes you line it up wonky but it, either way I think it, it works as long as you're lined up properly and I think having it so you uh, you have those the, the column in the middle allows you to line it up properly so you just lay one over the top of the other and it just seems to work and it did, thank God, because <laughs> I was really worried I was going to turn them around and I'd have done something wrong and it wouldn't work. So there we go. So there's our dome. So the shape of the dome I was happy with. Obviously, I needed to move it to get it to where I wanted it. And you can see here I'm, I'm turning it in such a way because I, I'm, I wanted the two next door. And obviously, this was the easy part. Just copy, paste, move it sideways. And... Uh, yeah, really, really simple. And then obviously I just needed to delete pieces in the middle to actually have them connected with each other. Um, so yeah, it, it did come out well in the end. And in fact, the work that I do after this uh, with the sides make it look so much better. Um, at the time I was sort of pleased with my work and I thought it looked good, but actually the metal pieces that I've used for the roof do make it quite, hard to see into the domes and uh, you'll see what I mean when you see the difference of what I use in the end and so here inside I'm I'm not doing anything too fancy in here just lots of platforms lots of walkways all these climbable pieces um, the chimps you know chimps just love climbing on things so just lots of poles at different angles that, that was the idea I was just making up as I went along really just just randomly putting in platforms and, and posts connecting them all and uh, and obviously some bedding here and there just give them plenty of room to walk around in I, as you can see I'll put some water down on the floor there so that's a obviously a nice artificial area of water that they can use they can't actually get in water they don't swim chimps but they they sit on the edge and drink it so that's fine 
I had put one chimp in there just to test it out to make sure that everything was working. What I've had to do, because um, I think I said it in the last couple of episodes, my computer is in bad need of uh, a new processor and, and probably some more RAM. And so the game is starting to lag a bit. So what I have done, or what I did do, I think, after I'd finished creating this habitat, is I've removed all the animals from my zoo because I found that it's the animals really that really uh, they slow the game down a lot because obviously your process is having to calculate what all these individual animals are doing and so I decided to get rid of them and that also allowed me to get rid of most of my staff members uh, which is fine I don't need the animals in the zoo once I've done each video and you know tested out the habitat I don't need the animals to stay so for now I'm, I'm more than happy doing that I am actually planning on a new project soon uh, I, I have I, as I'm recording this I have started my next project which is a new zoo uh, so I'll just uh, I'll, I might talk about that a bit more in the real-time bits just to tell you what I'm planning there this zoo will continue and I have started on the next habitat already but I think because of the problems I'm having with my computer I don't think I'm going to be able to continue this zoo for too much longer before my computer will just give up completely um, but yeah I don't know we'll we'll see how it goes hopefully at some point next uh, not next year it is the new year and hopefully sometime this year I will be able to upgrade my computer uh, we will have to see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, I'm just, um, I, w I really was just doing this very randomly inside, just, you know, connecting something and then building from it, seeing where I could connect it to. Um, and I just worked my way around. Obviously, I wanted the central one uh, on, the, on, the, on the column right in the middle there. And then from that, I just wanted sort of a, a circle of different platforms around the outside, all connected with these these big logs just I didn't want it overcrowded but you, ju you just want different uh, different angles lots of different angles lots of different heights for the uh, the chimps to run around on and as you can see there the one that I've got in there is very happily climbing Um, yeah it was good fun actually I did I did really enjoy doing this one um, it was my first time putting chimps in any of my zoos so yeah i'm really, really pretty pleased with how it's turned out especially after all the changes that i made it's uh, it's one of those things that I, I was happy at the time and then a day or two later i looked again at what i'd done and i just i realized that it just wasn't a, up to the the standard that i set myself and i knew that changing it was going to be time consuming and a real pain but actually the the pain was worth it because the the result at the end is so much better than this um so you obviously i will explain exactly what i've done in uh in the real time bit in a minute um but for now um i think this is nearly done for the time lapse so i'll uh, i'll be back in oh no it's still a couple of minutes left in fact so Let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just uh, just realised I've still got two minutes left of the time lapse here. Um, so one thing actually I did notice when I when I started to rebuild was if I removed these glass pieces, the chimps didn't escape, which was very strange. Um, I can only assume it's because I've used wall segments and lowered them into the ground around the outside, the small log pieces. It they count as a barrier which means the chimps don't cross them even though they're sunk in the ground and so at first what I did was actually just remove all the glass from around the bottom of the habitat and leave it open and the chimps chimps wouldn't come out which was odd and it looked much better but I, I wasn't happy with the realism aspect of that I wanted some sort of a, a barrier on there um, so I did I did put one on in the end I managed to create a, a sort of a, a metal barrier um, for it 
Uh, oh, this, uh, these central pieces you can see I created as a separate building, so I could just copy and paste them from each of the domes. I thought that was the easiest way to do it. I, di I didn't need a different design inside each dome. It seemed a bit, waste, bit of a waste of time doing that. Um, so yeah, we've got lots, lots to talk about in the uh, in the real time, um, which we'll be getting to in a moment. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll all make sense what I've done and what the changes that I've made once once I can explain it a bit better um, in a minute. Uh, so yeah, we're just about done now. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it so far, but stick around and I will be right back in just a minute. Okay, here we are back with our chimpanzees. As you can see, it's changed a fair bit. So let me show you what I've changed. Okay, so this, uh, as you can see, the bottom here with the glass, um, the glass had to go and I left it open and I didn't like the look of it. So this is what I came up with, these, uh, these metal bars. Um, I can't remember what this piece is. Aquatic fence end, yeah. Pretty handy little piece actually. You can manipulate it quite well. Um, so as you can see, I, I, I managed to sort of copy and paste that around the whole of the edge. And it looks much better. It's, um, it's not entirely realistic, I don't think. I, don't, I think they're probably too far apart. I think they would be closer together. I mean, realistically, they would be glass, really. <laughs> um, but you know, for what it what it is and what I needed, they're fine. And obviously, this roof is not realistic. Um, the chimps would just climb straight out of this. But for the sake of the game, these ropes work much better uh, because you can see through them a lot better, which is what we need in this game. Uh, so um, yeah, again, it was very time-consuming. As you can see, there's there's a lot of rope there, and it is it is one one building. And obviously, all I had to do was create one piece, and then I could copy and paste it around. And then each building is its own building. If you see what I mean. So I, I copied it onto this, and then I moved that whole building to there and over to there. It was the deleting of the old stuff that took all the time. Um, but the result is great. I really like how it looks now. You can really see through the enclosure and into the enclosure. Uh, I haven't actually got the chimps in there at the moment because uh, it was lagging my game too much. But you can see what's in here. Obviously, I've, I've brightened it up, got some trees. These trees are great because they are actually climbable by the chimpanzees as well, which is very nice. Uh, a few ferns around the bottom and obviously lots of enrichment all around the floor. Um, various pieces up on the platforms as well. Each um, each one is different. Each dome has got a different variety of of enrichment in, and obviously all the trees and the ferns are all very random as well. And I opened up these inside pieces here. Uh, I think originally I'd only emptied this doorway here as a as an opening but I got rid of the two on each side and, and the same over there just to really open up the enclosure um, and it works much better it really flows together nicely and uh, yeah there, there's not a lot more to it than that uh, obviously I've got my little building here so there's a little staff room and a, a keeper hut nothing too sophisticated about it really um, I wanted to keep the foliage to a minimum outside because obviously I didn't want to block the view because the path is a fair way away from the habitat, um, which it would be realistically. With certainly, if if there wasn't glass, you wouldn't be able to get that close. And so I've just gone with this simple hedging here. I I was going to put a fence in, but again, it, it was I I didn't want a fence as a barrier along here. Uh, and obviously I've broken the rule on this bit because the path does get close here. But you know what? You know, I, this this isn't about realism uh, necessarily. You know, there's a, there's an aspect of it, but really it's about aesthetics. And so that's that's sort of what I've gone for here. So the path around the outside, you can see, it does get quite close to uh, to the habitat. And obviously in here it comes right in here as well. 
which is a lovely little area here where you could you could stand here and you could see all three areas of the dome uh, obviously a few education boards this is my my usual one that I've copied over blank at the moment because uh, for some reason they've made it so if you don't have an animal nearby you can't even set that to something which is a bit annoying because actually you could use these elsewhere in a zoo like in an education center without an animal being nearby but you can't because you can't set that to an animal if it's not in your zoo so yeah a bit a bit, a bit odd i'm not sure why that's the case um, but a little bit annoying so there we are um I'm really happy actually with how that's turned out. I think the, the look of the three domes in that shape, um, hopefully you understand what I mean about the rule of three. If I think if that was just one dome, it'd be too small for a start, but I don't think it would look as, as nice. And obviously if you had just these two or just these two, it's just too straight. Having, having three of something like that uh, makes, makes it look much nicer. Um, so yeah. Yeah, really nice. Um, so I just want to tell you about my next project. So this this zoo will continue. I've still got a few more animals I want to get in here. And as long as my computer is working, uh, I will keep going. However, I'm looking to do a new project, which is going to be a more realistic zoo than this. So building backstage areas, lots of backstage stuff, lots of... Uh, interiors as well so building interiors and just just really fine details is what i'm going to try and do um, because as much fun as it is doing the habitats and obviously that is going to be a big part of my next project i what i want to improve in my own skills as a as a builder is buildings um, i'm not particularly good at buildings yet i'm getting better and i'm learning all the time um, but that's what I want to really f try and focus on in my next project. Um, so that's going to be coming to the channel soon. It's going to be called Waverly Zoo. Uh, that's the name I've come up with. I've already started work on it and it is going along really nicely so far. Um, the other aspect which will change is going to be how I do the videos. Um, I'm not going to stay with this format of doing a time lapse and then a real time bit. It's essentially all going to be real time. So you're not going to have a time lapse of me doing the construction. It's going to be, um, you're going you're to see real time segments of my, of my product as they're being built, if that makes sense. So basically, I will stop at several points through each stage of building and talk about what I've done so far and what I'm going to do next. Then I will go off camera and do more building and then I will come back and do a bit more video, if that makes sense. Hopefully you'll get it once I once I show you. It's a format that I've seen other um, zoo builders use here on YouTube and I really like it. I think it's, it's easier to explain in real time um, what you've done because you're not trying to work at pace to to talk about what's on the screen you can you can take your time over what you're trying to describe and it also takes the pressure off a bit when i'm building um build, when i'm building and recording you know it, it, you 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 feel the need to always be productive when you're recording uh, and i know obviously you can spend time editing videos but that's you know that's time that I don't really have and so what I want to do is is try and make it more efficient um, how I do the videos so that's what I'm going to try um, I mean obviously I'm, I'm always open to suggestions or feedback uh, from anyone watching but that's what I'm going to try so you'll have to let me know if you think it's uh, working or not um, but for now, uh, I'm going to leave it there. So I do hope you've had fun watching me build these domes. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully I will see you in the next one uh, very shortly. Uh, so until then, take care, stay safe. And uh, thanks again. And bye for now.